Today's local edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz, joined today by Andrew Cruz. He is a trustee with the Chino Valley Unified School Board. Tell us a bit about Chino Valley. Where is it? What do you um, serve? Well, I am the school board member mm. for this. I was reelected in this November. Again. Congratulations. And um, Chino Valley Unified School District, we, we have roughly about 29,000 students that attend our district. Uh -huh. We have Roughly 21 elementary schools right, right. for high schools and an alternative right. adult, adult ed. Right, seven middle schools. Seven middle schools. And what communities do you serve? Oh, we serve Chino Hills, Chino. Oh, nice. So we, we serve quite a bit of people. And then we have a, a charter school. Sure. Opa. Oh, well, that that's interesting. Also brings other students that brings a whole other, other conversation yes. in, but we won't talk so much about yeah. uh, the charter school movement right now. What I'd like to talk about is the revolution in educational funding. Um, oh, okay. You remember years ago, there were all these categoricals. That's right, Title this, I. Yeah, the state would say you have to spend this amount on this amount on this amount. And then we saw the local control funding formula pass, and that provided much more discretion to yeah. school districts on how they want to spend their money. Exactly. Um, and as part of the local control funding formula, uh, school districts received certain sums based upon their student body makeup. Um, there was the base, but then a school district could receive kickers. Um, they could receive supplemental grants if they were teaching, well, for every ESL student, economically disadvantaged, or foster kids. But if they had 55% or more of those three categories, they can get a concentration grant. Okay. Where, where did Chino Valley fall well, in this? It fell below 55%. Interesting. And if you went above 55%, it would go up to 70% rather right. than 30%. Which is interesting because I look at the makeup of your district. 57% are Hispanic. And so one could make the foolish assumption, well, if they're Hispanic, there must be a lot of English language learners. Mm. It's not the case. Oh, no, it's not the case. 13% are English language learners. Yeah, so it's a pretty... Okay, so you're dealing with the basics. You get yes. the supplementals, but you don't get the concentration. Yes. But as part of the plan, you have the local control accountability plan. You have to work with stakeholders. Yes, we have to work with stakeholders. And, um, and the way we do that, we, we provide, um, I know the first year that when we implemented this, it was very difficult because it was a learning experience <laughs> for everybody. Mm -hmm. And so not only we had the empowerment of make it, making it local, also, we needed to follow the guidelines of the state. And that was difficult because second year, third year, it increases and it changes. The state gave you eight uh, criteria. Eight criteria and a template, right. a guide to follow. The first one was 40 pages. The second oh, year was 80 pages. I saw it. And it changes. I saw it. You're right. And there was, any, there was no accountability yet. And right now, the accountability mm. has just started. Right. And so the accountability is really the accountability vis-a-vis the parents the oh yeah those are the eight points but the accountability are like graduation rate. oh I see what you're saying truancy expulsion and, and um, academics but let's do talk about the LCAP because okay. I think that's what's really oh, interesting yes. because every school district has had to sit down with the parents the teachers okay. the PTA the business community whoever wants to sit down and talk about what their priorities are oh yes because yeah and please. you know you know, when we talk about the LCAP, and you know, when we talk about Serrano Priest. Well, tell, the, tell us what Serrano Priest um, is. It, it was about the, uh, there was no equity be equitable right. in terms of funding within district and district. So mm -hmm. they brought up ADA. Until this day, there has still been discrepancy. Not everybody right. received the same amount of ADA. Right. So That's average daily yeah, attendance. Uh, yeah. So funding. LCF, uh, LSFF and LCAP yeah. was supposed to make it more equalized. And the way they did that, ADA still remains for K through six, eight, right, um, seven through eighth in high school, but it was the three, the three, um, the, the target, three, the three target groups, which was socioeconomics, um, ELs, and foster. Mm -hmm. and, and when we see districts' performance, it's always those that are lagging. And let's not forget the special ed too. So if we can increase their performance as student success, the whole district moves. So. They were focusing on that part, that we could make school districts. When you say they, meaning in your LCAP meetings, that's what people well, were saying? All the districts. All the districts. If you focus those three groups, you will make it more equitable. Because, you know, right. you remember the concentration. If you have more than 55%, you get 70%. So 
that part, we believe that it's going to make things more equitable. But you know what's interesting ADA. to me? Help me out here. Okay. So uh, an ESL student, English language learner, they present challenges. Yes. But you know, a gifted student presents challenges too. Oh, yes. Their own challenges. And mm -hmm. so there's no extra money for gifted. And so look, I'm just playing it out. Uh, what do we do there? Because a bored gifted kid, you know, is a terror. And so how yeah. do school districts deal with that? Maybe these, well look, a gifted kid could be anywhere, yeah. but you know, maybe some of the higher income districts may or may not have higher That's gifted true. numbers. And so should we need, do we need to look into that? Oh, most definitely when it comes to the outcome, those things are part of it too. Right. All of those are part of it. And as the parents put their input, students and teachers, if we need to enrich the GATE program, Right, which is then we do it as well. Mm -hmm. So all those are encompassing. Because when you talk about socio, foster, and EL, they themselves are gifted too. Right. So sometimes yeah. we bring them all together. There's no and, doubt. I, I mean, mean English language learners can be as smart yeah. or as that's, unintelligent yeah. as anyone. There's no c connection, obviously. Yeah, so, but I do. It is a serious. The gate programs are serious at our school district. Now, when you did speak, or when you heard what was said at your specific LCAP meetings at Chino Valley, what were the priorities of the community? You know, the priorities of the community, there were two things. One was behavioral intervention huh. and careers and pathways, college and careers. In these times, we know that careers are just as important as of college. Course, of course, of Being course. a plumber, being an electrician. You know, a, I've I said mean, this countless times. times. I feel like, uh, you know, throughout the 90s, everything was get him into college, get him into college. Not everyone's going to no. go to college, and that's okay. Exactly. Maybe get him into a vocational program. So we're looking at that. Yes. Yeah, so, so with all that in mind, with, with the input, originally we were doing it at the main district, mm -hmm. but, but that wasn't really feasible. But we have learned in the third year mm -hmm. was that we bring it at their school site because it becomes more meaningful because right. that's where the kids reside. So, there, so the district site provides PowerPoints to the principal. Principal brings um, parents and also parents of foster care, EL, mm -hmm. and low social and economics, and discuss the um, how wh what what would be the most effective programs to reach these goals. I want to ask you also about bilingualism because you represent communities with high Asian concentrations, oh, yeah. high Latino yeah. concentrations, and mm -hmm. I've spoken with a lot of folks who are on school boards, and they've said a lot of stakeholders have said, we want dual immersion programs, be it Spanish dual immersion, be it Chinese dual immersion. Did you hear that in your mm -hmm. areas? No. It may, maybe not. No, but you know what we do is we do have um, students from China. Right. They're coming to, and they're, they're emerging in our culture. Especially Chino our, Hills. Yeah. So, right. So I think we have like 300 right now. 300 Chinese, 300 Chinese from nationals. China, nationals living in, in homes, you know, people that are willing right. to bring them in. And it's, it's successful. It's a good experience. And they're all over the place. They're from the valleys and the hills. Right. So well, these are good. exciting times indeed. There's no oh, doubt yeah. that California is really trying to figure out the best practices in terms oh, yes. of educating our public school students. And you're on the front line, both as a teacher and yeah. as a school board member. His name is Andrew Cruz. He is a trustee with the Chino Valley Unified School District. My name is Brad Pomerantz. This is Local Edition.